morning. Welcome everyone as we join together this morning for the Tuesday of the fourth week of Lent. Welcome everyone joining us online this morning. Please join me in the entrance antiphon. All who are thirsty, come to the water, says the Lord. Though you have no money, come and drink with joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us take a moment to call to mind our sin. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May the venerable exercises of holy devotion shape the hearts of your faithful, O Lord, to welcome worthily the Paschal mystery, proclaim the praises of your salvation, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The angel brought me, Ezekiel, back to the entrance of the temple of the Lord, and I saw water flowing out from beneath the threshold of the temple towards the east, for the facade of the temple was towards the east. The water flowed down from the right side of the temple south of the altar. He led me outside by the north gate and around to the outer gate facing the east, where I saw water trickling from the right side. Then when he had walked off to the east with a measuring cord in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits and had me wade through the water, which was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand and once more had me wade through the water, which was now knee deep. Again, he measured off a thousand and had me weighed. The water was up to my waist. Once more, he measured off a thousand, but there was now a river through which I could not wade, for the water had risen so high, it had become a river that could not be crossed except by swimming. He asked me, have you seen this, son of man? Then he brought me to the bank of the river where he had me sit along the bank of the river I saw very many trees on both sides he said to me this water flows into the eastern district down upon the Arabah and empties into the sea the salt water which it makes fresh wherever the river flows every sort of living creature that can multiply shall live and there shall be abundant fish For whoever in this water comes, for wherever this water comes, the sea shall be made fresh. Along both banks of the river, fruit trees of every kind shall grow. Their leaves shall not fade, nor their fruit fail. Every month they shall bear fresh fruit, for they shall be watered by the flow from the sanctuary. Their fruit shall serve for food, and their leaves for medicine. The word of the Lord. The response. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. God is our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in distress. Therefore, we, bear, we fear not Though the earth be shaken and the mountains plunge into the depths of the sea, the Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. There is a stream whose, ga- whose runlets gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. God is in its midst. It shall not be disturbed. God will help it at the break of dawn. 
The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. Come, behold the deeds of the Lord, the astounding things he has brought on earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. A clean heart create for me, O God. Give me back the joy of your salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem, at the Sheep Gate, a pool in Hebrew, Bethsaida, with five particles. And these lay a large number of ill, blind, lame, and crippled. One man there who had been ill for thirty-eight years. When Jesus saw him lying there, and knew that he had been ill for a long time, he said to him, do you want to be well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. While I'm on my way, someone else gets down there before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your mat, and walk. Immediately, the man became well, took up his mat, and walked. Now that day was a Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who was cured, It is the Sabbath, and it's not lawful for you to carry your mat. He answered them, The man who made me well told me, Take up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who told you, Take it up and walk? For Jesus had slipped away, since there was a crowd there. After this, Jesus found him in the temple area and said to him, Look, you are well. Do not sin anymore, so that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went and told the Jews that Jesus was the one who had made him well. Therefore the Jews began to persecute Jesus because he did this on a Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. This morning we hear a common story from John chapter 5 that we're all familiar with, the healing of the man at the pool. And there are a couple of points to make about this story this morning. One is that many of the church fathers, when they comment on John chapter 5 and this story here, kind of highlight that this man wasn't too eager to be healed. It says here that he was ill for 38 years. It's a long time. The majority of his entire adult life, he was crippled, not able to do for himself or stand and walk. And it says when Jesus, you know, asked him, do you want to be well? He mentions that, you know, he can't make it to the water in time. Well, I have to say, you know, if I were him and I was there for almost 40 years, I think at some point in 40 years, I would have figured out how to get to the water quicker. I mean, I would have, like, one night gone sat at the edge of the pool and waited for the next day to come, right? I think after 40 years, you can figure out how can I get a little edge on this situation, right? He, he seems very complacent. The Father's Church kind of said that he kind of embodies just kind of being complacent with the status quo. And we even see that when Jesus, you know, questions him. Notice when Jesus says, do you want to be well? He responds about, you know, not being close enough to the pool, no one to help him. But when Jesus asked him if he wanted to be well, notice he didn't say yes. You know, he didn't respond with, with a sense of fervor like, you know, the rabbi is here, you know. You know, when others responded to Jesus, they had heard about all these miracles, all the healings he had done, and, you know, they were excited to, to ask Jesus for healing. 
You know, he doesn't show any of that excitement. And we can all, you know, identify, you know, with this man. Um, we've been ill for 38 years. In a sense, we may not have a physical illness, but yet sometimes we can have that spiritual um, lethargy. In a sense, um, sometimes we can become uh, spiritually complacent. You know, sometimes we can just uh, plateau in our spiritual life. We can just feel like, you know, I don't really feel called to take the next step. I'm just kind of complacent with the status quo. And so I think that's where this gospel speaks to us in this fourth week of Lent. The Lord is trying to um, stir our hearts still um, to go deeper. We, we hear in the first reading, uh, as the Son of Man walks out into the water, and the water first is um, ankle deep, then it's you know thigh deep, then it's you know chest deep. And the Lord continues to always invite us um, you know, to greater sanctity and, and greater holiness and, and greater friendship in Jesus Christ. And at times we can plateau and, and we can just say to Jesus, you know, I'm good where I'm at. You know, I don't have to give any more. You know, I don't have to change. But just as we see in the first reading, the Son of Man continually goes, you know, from ankle deep to, to thigh deep to chest deep, continues to go deeper and deeper and deeper. You know, we can never be status quo in our relationship and friendship with Jesus Christ. But God's always calling us um, to go deeper. So let us um, reflect as we, you know, reach the, the halfway point of Lent, as we look towards Holy Week. Let us ask the Holy Spirit for the grace to continue to be transformed in the love and friendship of Jesus Christ. Let us now turn to God our Father with faithful hearts, knowing he hears our prayers. For the Church, may the Holy Spirit lead us to live the Gospel more fully and faithfully. We pray to the Lord. For world peace, that God may strengthen the resolve of government leaders throughout the world to work together. We pray to the Lord. For those who are struggling with illness, depression, or fear, may they be strengthened by those who love God. We pray to the Lord. For those who have gone before us, may they rest peacefully in God's presence. We pray to the Lord. For peace in the Ukraine, we pray to the Lord. For our priests and representatives of our diocese in Louisville this week, and for our Bishop Father as he prepares to be installed tomorrow as Archbishop of Louisville, May the Lord continue to bless him in his transition and new appointment. We pray to the Lord. Lord, you alone are the source of every good gift. We thank you and praise you for your steadfast love as we offer our prayers today through Christ our Lord. Bless the Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work with human hands, and become for us the bread of life.
Bless the Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer to you, O Lord, these gifts which you yourself have bestowed. May they attest to your care as Creator for this our mortal life and effect in us the healing that brings us immortality through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things they eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Those on the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Those on the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ your Son who comes in your name, he himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves have turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so I converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and that the saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. May he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Shelton Joseph our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, 
So also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity and a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy they should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Read an antiphon. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me.
Let us pray. Purify our minds, O Lord, we pray, and renew with them this heavenly sacrament. We may find hope for our bodies, now and likewise in times to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow your heads for the blessing. Grant, O merciful God, that your people may remain always devoted to you and may constantly receive from your kindness whatever is for their good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. Peace be to God. Saint Michael. Remember, In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Most Holy Immaculate Virgin, our Mother Mary, you are our perpetual help, our refuge, and our hope. Mother, perpetual help, confident of your powerful influence with God, obtain for us these graces. Let us kneel to pray as a community of faith. Mary, all generations have called you blessed, and the Almighty has done great things for you. Let us pray for our temporal wants. Let us stand now to present our petitions and our thanks. Lord Jesus Christ, at a word from Mary, your mother, you changed water into wine at Canaan of Galilee. Listen now to the people of God gathered here to honor our mother of perpetual help. Grant our petitions and accept our sincere thanks. Grant wisdom and guidance to our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Fob, our priests, and all the leaders of our nation, state, and community. Grant peace and unity throughout the world, especially in our homes and families. Grant that young people respond generously to the call of the Holy Spirit and deepening their faith and choosing their vocation in life. Grant us continued health of mind and body and help the sick, especially, to regain their health according to your holy will. Grant eternal rest to all our deceased, especially, and to the souls of all the faithful departed. Amen. Let us pause now and solemnly present our own petitions to our own mother perpetual help. Lord, accept our thanks for the new life of grace you gave us. 
accept our thanks for all the graces received through the sacramental life of the church. Accept our thanks for the spiritual and material blessings we have received. Let us pause now to silently thank our Mother Perpetual Help for our own favors received. Please kneel as we pray for the sick. Jesus Christ be with you that he may defend you, within you that he may sustain you, before you that he may lead you, behind you that he may protect you, above you that he may bless you. In the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us renew our confidence in Mary as perpetual help. Let us stand now and unite with the Christians of all ages in praising Mary and in committing ourselves to her powerful protection. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, who gave us your mother Mary, whose image we venerate as a mother ready at every moment to help us, grant we beg you that we who call on her help may always enjoy the fruit of your redemption. We ask this through Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 